What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Spencer, back from not feeling like death, which is a good thing. And I've been messing around with a lot of decks recently, and a lot of them just haven't stuck. And one of them I've been really wanting to play for a long time and kind of fix up my list or at least tighten it up a little bit, make it a little bit better is Generator. So I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to go through the deck profile, I'll show a couple of gameplay videos afterwards, and I'll just kind of give my thoughts. And I know the popular way to play this deck right now is Runic, but. I don't like Runic, I find it very annoying, so I don't want to play it. So that's really where this comes in. And I used to play this like ritual version, and I was like really trying to like, you know, play like ranked matches against people who at the very least are like really trying to win. And I just saw that I was like seeing parts of the engine when I really didn't need them. It's not great going second either. So I, I decided to change things up, but I'll go into that. So let's get started. I one copy of Har. Uh, this card's incredible. Two copies of, of Vala. I know this like seems like a card you play at three, but for some reason it just I don't feel like it's necessary, and I've never like needed the third copy, so that's where that comes from. Uh, one copy of Mardell, Generator Boss of Light, and then one copy of Garda. Now, you can really easily I play like one copy of Tactics. In fact, it's probably just like cleaner to just play uh, another body. And I usually play this one, and I've, like, needed it sometimes. I don't really. I mean, this card just didn't come up that very, like, often, if, like, at all, when I was playing. So, like, I've been taking it out, but I can understand its utility, or maybe even, like, take this out and just play another copy of Vala. The only ones that are important are Har and Utgarda, in my opinion. Those are the only ones that come up, like, literally every game. You're always going to need to target and banish cards. You're always going to need Omni to Gates. That's just part of Yu-Gi-Oh!, so... I don't know. It is what it is, you know what I mean? But I would never play more than this because, you know, just like before, you know, even before Volley, you just don't want to see these cards in your hand. They're just not very good because uh, they're just like big dudes in your hand that don't do anything. So this is where things get a little interesting. So like I said, I used to play the Ritual Package, and I kind of wanted to clean things up a little bit. I don't know how I feel about Fleur. This is definitely one of those where I'm like on the fence for it. It has come up a few times for me, uh, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And you always like you don't like you don't want to run three copies of Nadir, and then like have this in your hand like with Nadir Servant, so you can't use it, and that's kind of like my biggest worry. So it is what it is, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm on the fence on this one, but like I said, it has come up a couple times. Uh, the Iris Sword Soul. This is actually something that I'm like kind of like really in favor for. So the good part of of the Dogmatic package for sure, of course, right, is Maximus being able to send him a two cards to the extra deck is insane. And, you know, it doesn't use your normal summon, which is the most important part. Because the thing about generators, it's a very small package. You don't actually have to play that many cards for it to work. Uh, but I, what I've been doing recently is I've been sending Lulu Wallace and, like, Wind Pegasus, like, when I'm going first. And this card, like, is kind of underrated. It's, like, it's not solemn judgment, but it does activate in that window where your opponent, like, just puts the monster on the board. It can destroy extra deck monsters. It can draw you a couple cards. And it just sticks there, and it's like something your opponent kind of has to deal with. And I, I've been really enjoying this card. This is something that I'm like more and more in favor of. Fenrir again. Try, I was trying to find a card that was good going first and second, and I think this is just probably, you know, like the best card ever at doing that. Uh, it is very popular in a lot of people's deck. They just kind of throw it in there, and I feel like this is one of those decks where like, I'm pretty happy to find a home in. Uh, three copies of Shadow the, the Generator uh, boss state, uh, Bosses, excuse me, geez. Um, you know, pretty standard stuff, right? Three copies of Lone Fire Blossom. All of these just to get you to Mardell. And, well, I mean, this card can get you into anything. And this card searches anything, which is really important. I feel like it's not a, like a common misconception, but, like, there was a time where I thought that this only searches, like, boss stage. But, no, it searches any Generator card, which is important because if this card is in your hand, this is the worst card in the deck to see in your hand of any of them. You can at least go into this guy and then, you know, bring this out by summoning Vala. You know, Vala is the most important card in the entire deck. So you just have a ton of ways to get there. Because you always want to see boss stage. Three copies of Ash, two copies of Imperm. I mean, they work, or at the very least, the Imperm works well in the Iris. I mean, these are, you know, you can run any hand traps you want. I have, like, a slot for nine in my deck is how I kind of how I play it. But really more, right? Because this is a going second card, Nadir Servant, and then Fenrir is a you know, first or second card. So you do have a lot of versatility and you do have a lot of like, you do kind of pack a punch going second and you're not like, you know, you don't, it's not like you don't have any chance going second. You actually, you know, have a decent chance because you have a lot of interruption. Three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Glad this card isn't a gajillion dollars anymore. Terraforming. Three copies of World Legacy Monstrosity. Being able to bring out two from the deck is insane. 
especially because the rank nine pool is like incredible. It's just really, really good. Three copies of boss stage, nothing too crazy there. And three copies of imperm. I mean, this is a pretty clean list all in all. I mean, it's mostly just three ofs. And the top looks a little bit different, uh, but you know, everything else, like once you get to Fenrir is like pretty standard stuff. Maybe not standard, but at the very least, it's a clean list. Um, On to the extra deck, one copy of Garua, right? If you're going first, you can just send this off of Nadir, get yourself an extra draw, which is important because you don't really need much to get going. You only need to see like one of these cards uh, in order to do that, right? If you just get this off the top, that helps get your boss stage going. And, you know, boss stage is good. It puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Nadir, or um, Eldrenchy Niss, <laughs> it's a pop. Lulu, Lolith, Wind Pegasus, just all cards that you can send, you know, going to the graveyard here off of your Dogmatica Maximus and out of your Servant. Zeus has come up a lot more than I thought. And Zeus is a good card, right? Don't, I just never really used it in Generator because I thought, oh, well, yeah, boss stage. But yeah, this card comes up all the time. This is that new card, the Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. Two copies of Enter Bath Near. There are times where you can get four level nines on the board pretty easily. And just being able to rip two, you know, rip two cards from your opponent's hand is, um, you know, really, really good. And it, and it's a, uh, it just gives you such a big advantage, especially when boss stage goes off. And I do run F zero, and actually, like, it has come up more than you might think. So I do. Um, this isn't one of those things where I'm like, oh, it never came up. I didn't use it. I'm gonna take it out. It has. It has come up quite a bit. This is a card that really doesn't ever come up, but. I imagine it might, um, but this is a candidate, and same thing here, Sacred Tree Beast, it's a monster to gate, which is okay, but yeah, at the end of the day, the same thing with nine lives cat, I just never used them, so, I mean, these are just, like, easy targets for Pot of Prosperity, basically, but the ones that come up all the time, this card's insane, non-targeting attachment is, like, the best form of removal, and it's also either, like, uh, on field or graveyard, so that's always a good thing, this card's very good. And, you know, it, it turns into this one. Although I do hope in the future that there is a different one that this can turn into. Because this does open up the, like, window. It says you can some in any, like, generator XYZ monster. Uh, it doesn't specifically say this one. Because this card doesn't do anything, right? Not not really. And I talked about F-Zero. The extra deck is what it is. I mean, this is just what I'm rolling with. But I don't know. It's not really worth going into. Everyone's side deck is a little bit different. Every format's a little bit different. So I'll just quickly go over and show you guys a couple of replays. This against Fire King. I was winning at like 60%, a 60% rate um, before. I guess I'll just show the lab replay first. I don't really know what's going on there. Oh yeah, and this like starts off horribly, right? This is not a good, a good look, um, but he does go for Welcome Labyrinth, okay. He's gonna try to search the big one and that's fine. Like I gotta just stop him there. I do have a couple of hand traps, but I mean, this is obviously the inherent weakness always with Generator, right? I just have big dudes in your hand, and no matter how much you don't want to see them, it just seems to be that way every time. He's trying to set that Welcome Labyrinth again. Like, once you get that combo going, like, it's over. Like, you can't beat Labyrinth. They're just going to out-resource you, and finally, something decent off the top. I mean, there's only good cards left in my deck, I feel like, but maybe I'd get, like, a hand trap or something. Maybe try to get rid of that last card in hand, and it ends up being a clock, but that's fine because that's the same difference. And then there goes Zeus. I just have to hope he doesn't get anything too good off the top. It ends up being, um, you know, just pretty much nothing. He turns it into Sky Crisis, but now it has, like, does nothing. It's really surprised he actually didn't just go into Zeus there. I mean, I'm pretty sure you would play that. But once you get Vala in rotation, I mean, you're in a really good spot. And this is a cool little chain here. I was able to search Fleur. And then, you know, before Elder did pop it, Fleur can still special summon itself. So I had enough for lethal... I thought that was kind of a fun little like replay there at the end. This is an entertaining replay against, um, it's like Horus Monarch. I play it, but he plays a few cards that I don't think he should play. And let's see what I get off the top. And it is the generator, and I talked about this, and this is where, and why I think, you know, Nadir Servant's a good kind of replacement for Runic. Again, I know like Runic is probably, and is like the best engine for it because you can special summon a level nine monster off the runic you know instant fusion uh, but i just like don't like playing runic <laughs> it's, just, it's not fun to me uh he's going to be able to draw a couple cards every turn now i mean that card is just too slow in my opinion it's like i'm really establishing you know myself i think he does have a second copy so yeah that stings what are you going to do uh, he's going to shuffle something back. It is hard, but that's fine because, again, boss stage just triggers every single turn. But 
slowly but surely i'm going to start chipping away at you know what this guy has and i just kind of have all of the advantage i feel like you know i can't use maximus unfortunately i did need to tribute summon the fenrir um you know maximus obviously can't be used but i gotta start getting rid of these like back row cards so he you know doesn't start out advantaging me and heart comes back every single time so i didn't really do anything in fact that'd probably be better for him to like you know go for the domain there that way you can like beat over this not necessarily for the extra deck part it's not like generator is completely dependent on it right like the boss monster supposedly are the the main deck ones i'm going to go ahead and go to the battle phase there get over his monster and go to the end phase that's going to trigger a boss stage every single time and then boom like i just kind of have this like really cool resource loop going with vala and most, you know, I've never, like, ran out of resources. I mean, duels just don't go that long anymore. Yeah, he's running Cash Tira. Um, he's running a lot of cards in his deck. I actually don't. feel like he's got to run out of room eventually. There goes Vala again. Just keep doing it over and over again. Now, I'm not going to be able to trigger anything, I'm pretty sure, during his turn now. But, yeah, I just go for Enter Bath near, and then I can attack for game. Like, lethal usually is not the problem. <laughs> Because all your dudes are like, you know, large. Let's see. Okay, here we go. This replay is acting normal now. There goes the Diet Bell Star. I mean, I have Fenrir. I have Imperm. So having double Fenrir is unfortunate. And also, like, seeing this in your hand stinks too. But at the very least, I have this guy so I can go for Vala. He's not going to be able to go for his, like, cool little combos, the Link 4, and, like, set himself up. I think that's the combo line at least. And I think all he has is a monster negate here, so things aren't looking too bad for me. I know he has a monster negate, so I'm basically just going to try to force that out, because I need to be able to, you know, go into Vala. It does destroy, but I had just another copy of Fenrir in my hand anyways. And then there we go. Vala can give me the Mardell, and Mardell can give me the field spell. And I do have Monstrosity, too, and you can just see how crazy this is. And this is where that um, double, you know, Enter Bat here can come in. I got rid of Fire King Island. And now I have F-Zero. I have Fenrir. And then I can just summon my other copy of Vala. Which is going to get me hard. And suddenly now, like, there's... You know, I'm pretty much taking a very commanding lead here. He does get our Vata. But he's going to have to send something from his hand. And Har is incredible. I mean, it's, it's a really good... It's one of the best main deck monsters of any archetype, I feel like. Yeah, and then that's just obviously it. I had a decent matchup against Fire King. It's it's a good deck, so and I'm playing something goofy like Pure Pen uh, Generator. But yeah, uh, let me. That's my most updated list. I'm going to get to a lot more now that I'm not feeling. You know, I should say I'm feeling better. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that's going to do it for today's video, and I will see you guys next time.